Standard Fifth, Subject EVS One, Chapter Nineteen, Constituents of Food. Dear students, can you recall what is meant by diet? A food that a person or animal usually eats can be called as diet. For what purposes do we need food? We need food to get energy for our growth, etc. What are the different tastes that foodstuffs have? So we can say that the foodstuffs sometimes taste sweet, salty, sour, or even bitter. How do we experience these tastes? We experience due to the taste buds present on the tongue. You have learned that foodstuffs have constituents that are useful to us in different ways. Let us learn some more about constituents of food. Food is composed of five basic components. These are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals. So, in this chapter. we will be studying each one of them in detail let's begin with carbohydrates carbohydrates form essential structural component of living cells carbohydrates include sugars starch and fiber so under carbohydrates we will be studying in detail about sugars starch and fiber let's begin with starch try this take some material such as a piece of a potato tincture of iodine and a dropper your procedure add some water to a tincture of iodine to dilute it using a dropper put a few drops of it on the piece of potato and observe what do you see you will see that when you take iodine and check its color first it is yellowish brown in color so put a few drops in one plate to check its color it is yellowish brown now put a few drops on rice it immediately turns black now put a few drops on sliced potato even potato turns blackish blue just like rice now put a few drops on ice on cubes of sugar on cubes of sugar the color remains same now salt on salt also the color of iodine does not change at all so on sugar and salt we see no change in the color of iodine that means we can say that the piece of potato turns blackish blue due to the presence of starch in it so starch turns blackish blue when it comes in contact with iodine so we can infer that there is starch in the potato sago and sweet potato also contain starch cereals like jowar bajra wheat rice contain a lot of starch we obtain flour from these grains these grains form a staple diet we get energy from starchy foods our body uses this energy for different kinds of work this energy also keeps the body suitably warm do you know when the starchy foods we eat are digested sugars are formed when sugars burn slowly in all parts of a body releasing energy in other words sugars formed by the digestion of starch act as a fuel for our body use your brain power why do we feel hungrier in winter than we do in summer simple reason during the winter the temperature of body falls due to the cold weather the body feels that there are not enough nutrients to keep heat in our blood thereby stimulating hunger can you tell what substances do we use to give our food a sweet taste sugar jaggery honey fruit juices dates etc are the substances that can be used in our food to give it a sweet taste of the foods that we eat raw which ones are sweet 
you can see milk here along with that ripe fruits honey sugar cane juice okay and jaggery are the food stuffs that can be eaten raw and also they are sweet to taste now let's learn about sugars in carbohydrates we learned about starch now other part of carbohydrates are sugars food stuffs that taste sweet contain different kinds of sugars for example we can obtain jaggery and table sugar from sugar cane because it contains a sugar called sucrose ripe fruits like mango banana chiku as also honey and milk also contain various kinds of sugars they too give us energy try this materials that you will need is a fine sieve some whole wheat flour procedure is to sift the flour what do you see most of the flour falls through the sieve but some larger particles are left on the sieve so we shall now learn about fiber when grain like jowar wheat is ground into a flour the particles in the flour are not all alike when the flour is sifted we find the larger particles left behind on the sieve as you can see here larger particles are hold, held back in the sieve these particles are fine particles of the skin or bran of the grain bran is a fibrous substance in the process of digestion fiber has a special function fibrous substances help the food to move forward in the alimentary canal at the right speed the undigested food is of no use to the body fiber helps to form stool from this undigested food so fiber is also called rough age so it's very important for the process of digestion fruits and vegetables especially the skins whole grains and pulses are all sources of fiber in food if a food does not contain enough fiber it can lead to constipation and often you complain of stomach ache then up to now we have learned about three types of substances present in our food starch sugar and fiber these substances are together called carbohydrates The most important use of carbohydrates is to provide the body with energy. So first part of this chapter we have completed that is carbohydrates. Now use your brain power. Threads get stuck between the teeth when we eat certain type of mangoes. Which kind of carbohydrate are they? Yes, your answer will be they are the fibrous part of carbohydrates that is the fibers. Now let's learn about fats. Oil is a fatty substance. Paper becomes translucent. Translucent means allowing light to pass through but not totally transparent. So paper becomes translucent as you see in the picture when a fatty substance is applied to it. Paper becoming translucent is a sign of the presence of fats in the food stuff food stuff kept on it. fats in our food also provide energy to our body they give twice as much energy as carbohydrates but we include a smaller quantity of this constituent in our diet cream butter ghee oil are examples of fats nuts meat egg yolk and also contain fats the fats we eat get stored in our body if food is not available for some time the body can get energy from the stored fats there is a layer of fat under our skin it gives shape to the body and like a blanket also provides prevents the loss of heat from the body can you tell why are boxes of fragile articles like tv refrigerator light bulbs glasses mirrors packed with corrugated cardboard thermocol or bubble wrap let's have a look at the answer you can see 
some articles are carefully packed in boxes so the reason could be fragile articles are more likely to break if proper packing is not done the cardboard thermocol or bubble wrap protects the fragile articles even when the boxes shake fall or get heat the article inside are not damaged similarly the layer of fat in the body protects our internal organs an injury from outside does not at once cause damage to our bones or other internal organs now use your brain power why do we use a padding of cloth under a mortar you can see a picture here of a mortar and a cloth beneath it when we place it on the floor and pound something in it why do we use a padding of cloth it is to absorb the jerks caused by the pounding done and thereby the protect the floor from any damage can you tell suppose a wall is to be built the cement sand water is all there but the mason says the most important material is still missing what can that be so that could be rocks and the bricks so these are the very important components to build a wall similarly proteins just as stones and bricks are the buildings building blocks needed for a wall proteins are the building blocks of our body the body undergoes wear and tear continuously sometimes it gets injured but the healing and repair of a body goes on all the time without our being aware of it proteins are necessary for that purpose proteins are required in plenty during the growing years of a person's life all the different dals pulses groundnuts milk and milk products like yogurt khoya and paneer eggs meat and fish are rich sources of proteins to get the required proteins our daily diet should include dals pulses as well as milk and milk products our body requires carbohydrates fats proteins in large proportions these food constituents are therefore called macronutrients so what are macronutrients carbohydrates fats and proteins and what makes up carbohydrates we studied sugars starch and fibers come under carbohydrates besides carbohydrates we have fats and proteins which form a very important constituent of our diet now let's study about vitamins and minerals essential micronutrients are vitamins and minerals so we learned about macronutrients which are carbohydrates fats and proteins now we shall learn about micronutrients vitamins and minerals in addition to the macronutrients we need certain food constituents in very small quantities these micronutrients are vitamins and minerals so let's study about vitamins first the different vitamins are named using the letters of the alphabet for example vitamin a b c d e and k and the sub parts are the most important vitamins although we need vitamins in very small quantities a lack or deficiency of any vitamin results in the serious disorders for example a deficiency of vitamin a over a long period results in night blindness a deficiency of vitamin d results in weak and brittle bones vitamins give us the ability to resist diseases means if we take proper quantity of vitamins in a daily diet then we can avoid resist the diseases and as mentioned to you night blindness means 
you have a difficulty of sight during night it's not that you are completely blind during night okay so this diseases can be avoided by proper intake of vitamins now let's study about minerals iron calcium sodium potassium zinc magnesium are examples of minerals that are essential for the body they are needed in very small quantities but they have an important part to play in all the necessary functions of our body for example iron is necessary for carrying oxygen to different parts of the body if there is a deficiency of iron in the blood the body does not get enough supply of oxygen and one can feel constantly weak and tired this condition is called anemia the mineral calcium makes our bones strong all kinds of fruits vegetables green leafy vegetables sprouted pulses their skins and bran of cereals and pulses are all sources of vitamins and minerals that is why as far as possible we should eat fruits with their skins and we should not sift flour to throw away the bran now let's learn about a balanced diet what do we tell about ourselves when we say i am fit and fine being fit and fine means that we have enough strength and energy to study play and carry out all our tasks quite easily our body is growing well and we do not fall ill every now and then we all wish to be in good health for good health our body should get all the different constituents of food namely carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals in the right quantities a diet which provides all these constituents in the right quantities is called a balanced diet so from this you will understand that macronutrients as well as micronutrients are essential for a proper development of our body and also for our growth do you know one eatable can contain many constituents from every food item in a diet we get several constituents of food for example chikki or guddani from the nuts proteins we get from the nuts what all we get proteins fats and carbohydrates and from the jaggery we get sugar and iron so so many constituents of food are obtained by eating chikki banana gives us sugar some minerals and fiber boiled eggs contain proteins fats some vitamins and minerals so we need variety in our diet to get all the types of food constituents now let us learn about nourishment and malnutrition for a body to be well nourished we must get all the different food constituents in the right quantities if a person's diet lacks some constituents over a long period of time that person does not get proper nourishment malnutrition has serious consequences for the person's health for example if a person does not get enough carbohydrates and proteins their growth is stunted they feel constantly tired they cannot cope with their studies or games or other tasks deficiencies of vitamins or minerals causes some specific disorders there are some misconceptions about diet if a child eats sweets chocolates cakes fried stuff etc and grows fat some people think that the child is healthy but if you eat only one kind of food stuff your body does not get all the necessary food constituent such a person would be malnourished so always remember it is better to eat freshly prepared food items that will make for a balanced diet rather than snack on tempting ready made foods you see in the market what we have learnt in this chapter the body gets energy from carbohydrates proteins are necessary for the growth of the body as well as for the repair of the wear and tear of the body our body gets energy from fats too although our body needs vitamins and minerals in small quantities a deficiency means inadequate 
consumption of vitamins and minerals can lead to a disease of or disorder fruits vegetables and their skins cereals and pulses are all sources of fiber from each of the food items that we eat we get more than one food constituent if the diet does not include all the food constituents in the right proportion it leads to malnutrition malnutrition has serious consequences for a person's health so this way we have learned about this chapter which tells us about constituents of food and their importance so hope you have understood this chapter well it is very important that we learn from this chapter and accordingly implement a good balanced diet in our daily lives so students do read the chapter from your textbook for a better understanding stay safe keep learning and thank you